Right now, Spitzer's back and ready for battle, but are New Yorkers ready to embrace the disgraced former governor? And does Spitzer's return to politics mean that sex scandals just don't matter anymore? From Anthony Weiner to David Vitter to Mark Sanford, it appears the public may be willing to just let it slide. And later, you'll never guess how many pieces of legislation President Obama has signed so far this year. I'll give you a hint, the number is very low, record pace low. We're going to break down why D.C. has become the capital of inaction. Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman in tonight for Richard French. Thanks so much for joining us on this Monday evening, July the 8th. So what do you think we're going to talk about first? After a prostitution scandal that forced him to resign the governorship, Elliot Spitzer is back in the political fray. He is running for New York City Comptroller. Files 1 Samantha Liebman caught up with him on the first day of his campaign. She joins us now live from the Upper West Side with more. Sam? Well, Andrew, what was a boring New York City Comptroller's race is now quite interesting. Elliot Spitzer hitting the campaign trail for the first time today, and he seemed to be basking in all the attention from both the media as well as hecklers. Why are you late? Were you with a hooker? Very funny, guys. Mobbed by reporters and hecklers, former New York Governor Elliot Spitzer took his first day on the campaign trail in stride. It feels a little claustrophobic right now, but it's uh, a little hot in here. But, it, you know, I love it. I love the maelstrom. I love the screaming. I love the shouting. But what I love most of all is doing things for the public. Spitzer hoping New York City voters can forgive him after he resigned as governor in 2008 over a prostitution scandal as he makes a bid for New York City Comptroller. I want the voters to listen to what I've done, look at the record that I developed as an attorney general, as an assistant district attorney, as a governor, and say this guy understood the public interest. Spitzer says the fact that many voters seem to have forgiven mayoral candidate Anthony Weiner for his Twitter scandal had no bearing on this decision. People have forgiveness in their hearts. Whether that forgiveness extends to me is a separate issue. We got mixed reaction from voters we spoke with. He shouldn't be running for office again. That's crazy. I want him in office. He didn't offend me. I recognize that Elliot Spitzer has made some terrible decisions, uh, but he spent the last five years doing something serious. I don't think people forget, but honestly, if he does his job properly, I really don't care what he does in his personal time. Meanwhile, the only Democrat in the race until now, Manhattan Borough President Scott Stringer, had this to say in response to Spitzer's campaign. I have tremendous support around the city from elected officials, labor unions, people on the street, people organizing. However, political strategist Alex Voach believes despite the late start, Spitzer could win this race. Elliot Spitzer is a very formidable candidate. He has the money, the profile, and the experience to turn this into a real race. Now, Spitzer will be self-financing his campaign with his family's vast fortune. That means he can spend an unlimited amount of money, whereas Scott Stringer, participating in the public financing program, has set limits. Now, another obstacle for Elliot Spitzer is that he has to collect about 3,700 signatures before the filing deadline on Thursday to get his name on the ballot. Andrew. Sam, it looked like that Elliot Spitzer was enjoying being in the center of all this media attention. Did you get the sense he was having a good time today? Absolutely. He was speaking back to hecklers, really uh, very calm and collected. And he stood out in Union Square for, I'd say, a good half hour, 40 minutes in the sweltering heat, surrounded by media that were about five deep. I mean, I came <clears throat> out of that media frenzy with my mascara running down my face. So he was very cool and collected. And yes, yeah, absolutely seemed to be enjoying being back in the spotlight once again. Andrew? More uh, more media members there than people actually wishing him well or, or voters there as he was meeting them? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'd say there were about 100 members of the media there from print, radio, TV, networks, uh, in some international media as well. So there were a lot, but there were also people trying to uh, get people to sign the petition. Um, and even uh, Spitzer had one of those uh, petition sheets on him and someone came up and actually signed the petition from Spitzer once he got away from all of the media. And there were a lot of well-wishers for him, though, as well. And finally, Sam, any sign of Spitzer's wife, Silda, or any mention of whether she is going to be joining this campaign? 
Well, there were rumors that they may be separated, but he confirmed that they are, in fact, together and that she will be campaigning with him, but that she was at the office today. Now, in contrast, Scott Stringer was here on the Upper West Side, uh, and he appeared with his wife, Elise. Someone asked him about whether that was uh, a pointed, uh, you know, counterpoint to Spitzer and to his marriage, and he said no. They were just able to get the, his parents to watch their kids, so they were able to both come out onto the campaign trail. But I just also want to note that Scott Stringer was very subtle. He focused on his own campaign and that he's not changing his strategy, but he also mentioned the word integrity and trust a lot, and that the office of controller is really dependent on those qualities, seemed to be an underhanded jab at Spitzer and his scandal. Andrew. All right, Samantha Liebman live from the Upper West Side tonight. Sam, thanks very much. Let's bring in our panel on this. We're joined by Dominic Carter, political journalist and author, and Richard Brodsky, former New York State Assemblyman, senior fellow at Demos, professor at NYU, and oh so much more. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, this is a serious candidacy. Is he the front runner in the race for controller? Guess what? This race is over. He's going to win. No. He's definitely going to win. There's no doubt Please. about it. I feel so bad for Scott Stringer. Please. Scott Stringer is a nice guy, but the moment that Mr. Spitzer said that he was entering this race, and I'll, we'll get a chance to debate this, it's over. Benito. He might as well not even run. Is it the name recognition? The or? name recognition, the star power, period. Plus, you consider the fact that Spitzer is an expert on financial issues. This is a job that's almost tailor-made for him. This race is over. You said please. I, this, uh, that's as polite as I'm going to get. <laughs> the, 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 uh, just as Dominic was just wrong about Anthony Weiner. Oh, oh, no, wait, wait. I was 100% correct. No, no, he said, no, He no, said no. he could be the front runner. I can say he's going to be the You're front You're confusing runner. you and me. No, that's not no, an no, easy no. thing you to do. You can't confuse right, us. Let's, wait let's a minute. not keep scoring. <laughs> <it. laughs> The, 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 this is going to be much more difficult for Elliot Spitzer than it's been for Mark Sanford with Scott or Anthony Weiner or anybody. With Scott Stringer? And the reasons are all three of them, Sanford, Weiner, Spitzer, let's say, have personal transgressions they have to explain, seek forgiveness, and be forgiven. All three will receive that forgiveness. But Weiner had a residual image as a middle-class tough Brooklyn guy, and Sanford had a residual I image in South Carolina as a Tea Party conservative. What is it about Elliot's Spitzer? Elliot's res residual image is a steamroller, a tough guy, a bully. Mm -hmm. That is not the kind of re residual image that people are going to turn to and go, yeah. They're going to go, do I want that back in government? Is this the guy who is a self-described steamroller? But Richard, can I ask you a question? Idiot, please. Can I ask you a question? Steamroller. Isn't that the, the sole reason why he was elected governor? Mm -hmm. Because folks were sick and tired. No offense of the buyers. Albany legislature. It's called, that's more of your baloney, Dominic. That's my baloney. And, wait a minute. And that's his baloney. baloney. <laughs> and the <laughs> press's <laughs> baloney. How did I get in there? You're just lumped in. But, so, but so, wait, so wait. the public loves the legislature. Yeah, no, 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 I didn't say that either. Okay, nice okay, try. Okay. What I said was the public ain't stupid. I agree and with that you. They're, where they're looking to fill a job, they're going to want to know what the qualities are that the person brings. Maybe you get forgiven, maybe you don't. But once you're forgiven is, what are you going to do for me? And Elliot Spitzer coming in with, as a bully boy with a club may attract some people for their support. And other people are going to have a little bit of buyer's remorse and say, that's not working in Washington. It's not working in Albany. That's not the, the thing we want. What he faces is a two-tier re recreation, the personal transgressions and the image of what he was when he was in power. Well, That's different than what Wiener and Sanford We'll face. get to the personal transgressions in a little bit, but don't New Yorkers sort of like a guy or a candidate with a little bit of attitude, with a little of bit of moxie. Of course, that's why Spitzer was elected governor. With all due, and, and I say this, even uh -oh. if Brodsky wasn't here tonight, uh -oh. I would say this. Brodsky's one of the good ones. I'm flipping oh, it here. Stop. Brodsky's and one it, of the... And Brodsky's, he's sometimes a very nice man. <laughs> Brodsky's one of the good ones. But Spitzer was elected 
to go clean up Albany. And they knew, the public he, knew, that it couldn't be some nice guy. And he, it had to be somebody who was a steamroller. Th- that's nonsense because he didn't do it. He right. failed. And, it did, and he not, failed. it did not go well even before the prostitution scandal. He had a very he difficult... Was, he was going to... I wonder why. He was going to bully why. Joe Bruno. Because the institution tried to block oh, it. please. That's why. D- Elliot Spitzer the hero? No, Is I'm that not calling... No, no, no. Oh, not, my <laughs> goodness I'm gracious. Not, I'm not calling him a no, hero. No, 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 no. But Scott Stringer... Come on. There are Let, the governance styles that people like, and there are governance styles that people don't like. It was easy for Wiener. It was easy for Sanford. He could win. I'll give you that. But it's not going to be this automatic thing. Just as you all, close, <laughs> missed Wiener, you all I didn't are miss, missing. I called Wiener to the tease. Yeah, Spitzer. Think. Spitzer has <laughs> structural problems with his candidacy that go beyond <laughs> And his let me just tell you why I, feel guilt, why I feel bad and sad for Scott Strickland. Go ahead. Remember, he was running for mayor. He dropped out of that contest because he wanted an easy run. Everyone thought the battle for state controller, for city controller, would be an easy contest. It, it was believed that once you won the primary, Democrats are going to go in and vote for the Democratic name. But now, when you consider that he's in the campaign finance system, when you consider that Scott Stringer probably has the personality, no offense, of this table, Spitzer is going to walk away with this thing. Watch my prediction. Scott Stringer is going to have to attack Elliot Spitzer, but not on the transgressions, on the question of what he'll bring to the governance table, and he'll get an audience for Well, he's already said that even the black socks are on the table. And you know what the illusion is to that. Yes. You know, but... It, you were, Scott said that? Yes. Big mistake. You, <laughs> you were in Albany when Spitzer was governor. Yeah. Did you have any personal interactions with him that make you think, boy, he... A he, bunch. I had a... I, I was... It was an arcane legal point. I was representing the legislature in a complicated litigation against Con Edison. He didn't like the position we were taking. He picked up the phone, and he shrieked, screamed, bullied, and threatened. I'm used to 800-pound gorillas. A 400-pound gorilla doesn't scare me. Isn't that the kind of thing that lawmakers won't like, but voters might? No human being in the world likes that. It doesn't work. It's never worked. You can be tough, Lyndon Johnson, FDR, JFK, Ronald Reagan. You don't have to be an idiot about it. That part of the Spitzer personality, that part of the Spitzer image is going to have to be dealt with. Look, he knows his stuff. He was a real hard-nosed opponent of Wall Street at a time when no one else would take it on. To this day, no one else would take it on. He's got real assets. But if, if anyone who thinks that Scott Stringer can't conduct a campaign that's saying, this is not the guy, this is not the temperament, this is not the style that governance in New York City needs, is underestimating Scott Stringer. If he wins, how difficult does he make life for whoever is elected mayor? Extremely difficult, uh, even if it's a fellow Democrat. <clears throat> Generally, the rule is if there's a fellow Democrat in office, you do your audits, but, but, you know, but you don't embarrass the institution of mayor. Mr. Spitzer is this the type is... of guy, Mr. Spitzer is the type of guy that if he likes you, you know, it may go a little easier, but if, if he doesn't respect you or like you, he will go out Elliot there publicly Spitzer and do what he is feels is necessary. a smart guy. Very and smart And it man. doesn't do him any good to become the, the attack dog here. He's got that reputation. You cannot turn this into a set of cartoon figures having a cartoon conversation about cartoon issues. Elliot Spitzer would be a good controller. Scott Stringer would be a good controller. The questions that voters will settle will go well beyond that kind of stuff and go into the question of what the government of the city of New York needs. It's a legitimate thing. It's not over. Scott Stringer is going to be a formidable candidate. I'll bet you a dinner on on this race. Where where were you on all the other things I was right (laughs) on that you were wrong on? (laughs) I'll I'll bet you a dinner on this one. I'm going to go back and search all the other conflicts, and we're going to bet on all of them or none of them. And that's a felony. And and Elliot Spitzer, if he was attorney general, would be down here pounding on the table. <laughs> no, uh, private bet between people is okay. That's not anything. It's a gambling okay, stand. We're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, it's a point that uh, Richard touched on briefly, but Spitzer's return to politics, does this mean that sex scandals just don't matter anymore? 
That's next, but in the meantime, head over to Facebook and to Twitter, join the conversation. Spitzer is back, and it's the question we'll be asking next segment. Do sex scandals matter anymore? RFL continues right after a quick break.